Hello friends, welcome back to another declutter and organize with me vlog. Today we are doing a kitchen glow up. I did not plan on filming this tonight, uh, but you know when you have an idea in your head and you just cannot get it out? That is me right now. I feel like I've been configurating the insides of our kitchen for the past three or four days and I just can't sit any longer without doing anything. So I'm just gonna start off tonight by showing you what is currently inside of the kitchen cabinets and some of the drawers. We're not really gonna do much with a ton of the drawers just because it's working for us, but this glow up is all about making our space more efficient and effective because things are in places that they once were useful in, but now we've got a new coffee machine, as you can see behind me, super stoked about it. And so our coffee nook in the cabinet is no longer needed and it's a massive space which could be used for other things. This also used to be like a cooking prep area which is now you know home of the coffee maker so that doesn't work and the things that are underneath this cabinet like the appliances don't work here because we used to take them right out of the cabinet and put them on the counter but there is no more space so I want to put them somewhere that makes more sense that was the whole idea when I kind of organized this kitchen at the very start of us moving in and I do think that you know, as you live in a space, it adapts to the way that you're living and to your needs as well. So it's about time and I'm super excited. You guys know I love organizing, so let's get into it. Okay, dinner has just been freshly cleaned up, so don't mind the mess. This is a realistic kitchen experience right now. We have a galley way galley kitchen i'm not exactly sure what the name is i've heard someone say it before but basically our kitchen is just one straight pathway and it has this kind of part over here that dips out which does give us a bit more space but for the most part it is pretty small but i designed this kitchen and the cabinets and the drawers to maximize the space that we have. So you'll notice that they go all the way up to the ceiling as well as they're quite deep um, on the edges. Like the towers here and there are very, very large. So there's quite a bit of storage space, um, but it also makes storage solutions a little bit more complicated just because they are so deep, but we'll get into that later. Um, yeah, okay, so over here we've got our cups. This is working doesn't really bother me at all. Um, I think I will maybe rearrange some things there to make it better. Like we have her bottles there, which don't really make sense. And there's also an open space up there. So I think that my water pitchers will go up there. We recently invested in a tiny stool so that I can reach the highest cabinets. Um, so that's great. And then in this next one, we keep lunch boxes here and water bottles. We have too many of those, so we're gonna do a little bit of a declutter. And then at the top, we have cookbooks that I literally never touch, as well as the knife block that came with our set, which we also have never used. Why am I keeping it? I don't know. Over here, we have our mugs and this great big space in the middle of the cabinet because I could not reach the mugs when they were higher up, so I moved the shelf down, but there's not an extra shelf to kind of fill that space so we're gonna fix this area definitely um because the coffee machine is over there the mugs should probably also go over there too so we're gonna work on that and then over here we've got our coffee and tea nook i was super excited when i did this i did a whole like tiktok and everything and we do use a lot of the stuff in here but definitely not everything so I just don't think that having a space this big is necessary anymore and we also don't need this coffee machine. There have been so many problems with it and we just, we're gonna use the pods that we have and then probably either donate it or sell it because we definitely don't need two coffee machines. There's also stuff down here that we don't need and so that frees up a whole bunch of space because this is going to be kind of the cook and prep area. I'm going to move some appliances to this side just so that it's easier to grab them and it makes more sense. Up at the top, we've got our tiny, alcohol collection which we do not drink ourselves i am keeping those bottles to give as gifts because we don't actually drink alcohol on a weekly even monthly basis so that can go we've got random ice trays 
some cooking pans and then that top one just has a few other like cake pans and stuff so a lot of space up there too in the drawers here we have got cooking essentials we've got some extra rice down here sauces packets of random stuff cornstarch you know you know the deal you can see what's inside it doesn't really have a method there so we're gonna organize that and then this is my baking drawer my beloved baking drawer i love it but it does get messy and it always stays this messy so i'm also going to do some reorganizing here and then over here we've got placemats trivets oven mitts apron extra napkins things like that we definitely can declutter some stuff in here but i do like having it super close to the dining room just because you know when i need to grab something it's right here down here we've got mixing bowls as well as like a salad spinner shredder all that stuff this works for us and I feel like it's not too crowded and it's easy enough to get stuff out so no changes there and then in the bottom we've got containers which also needs to be decluttered um, and just tidied up a little bit but other than that it works for us down here we've got recycling and then this is the dishwasher and then over here we've got typically cutting boards and baking sheets down there so this i designed specifically to be skinny for these items so it works for us and that won't be touched last but not least above the fridge we've got this cabinet um just vases extra decor a cake platter and all that stuff which is going to be decluttered and cleaned out so that is the left hand side of the kitchen and now we will move to the right side. Okay, so that super tall, super deep cabinet that I showed you earlier on is this one. Um, we never got the second shelf for this, so it is just a pile of pasta and canned goods. And I'm going to go to Home Depot and get a shelf cut for this because it's just ridiculous. We are wasting this entire space up here because we don't have anything to put stuff on um, but this also is going to get a little makeover and then over here we've got a whole bunch of random stuff we have medicine cereal some bags containers random stuff at the top uh, this could be better as well so we are going to reorganize that and then on the bottom we've just got small appliances air fryer blender food puree or <laughs> um, rice cookers waffle maker protein bags whole bunch of stuff that needs some new organization down in that tall cabinet we've just got breakfast stuff um, as well as baby things so it is categorized in a way but i want it to be a little bit tidier so that i can actually see what we've got like i do love clear bags because i can see what's in them but then when they're all piled on top of each other, what's the point? So we're going to clean that up. And I also need to find just like a better solution to keep all of her stuff as well. And then under here, you've seen it before and it is the snack drawer. So this works for now. We try to keep all of our snacks contained to this one drawer. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do much with this, but we'll see. Okay, just quickly because I'm not going to do much in here except for declutter utensils cooking utensils, baking utensils, and a semi-junk drawer, which actually has useful stuff in it, but it looks like a mess right now because of these new manuals. But it does have like scissors that are not used for cooking, bags, wraps, all of that type of stuff. Above the oven and below the stovetop, we've got spices and knives. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to do anything here. I feel like this works for us right now and it all fits really nicely, so we will see. Over to the left, we have got plates, uh, pots and pans, and then serving dishes, trays, platters, and a few extra pieces of decor. So this is going to be fixed as well. Okay, and then this last cabinet is full of cooking sauces. I have this like riser thing um, that stuff falls off of, so that's great. 
but I think that this could be easier to navigate when we're cooking, so I am going to do some major editing here. We also have some extra baking supplies and spices, and then like a tea kit up there, like a tea set, which we got for our wedding, so definitely keeping that. It is a sentimental piece, and I do use it when my grandma comes over for tea. Um, but this, yeah, I think it could be better. It's not terrible, and it's pretty organized for the most part, but I just feel like it could be a little bit better. Um, and I am in the mood to switch things around a little bit. I feel like it keeps the kitchen fresh, exciting to be in, and exciting to like find my stuff in. And if you are also in need of a little kitchen makeover, I hope that you join me on this fun little challenge. The first thing I did was declutter. If there's anything I've learned from being a compulsive organizer, it's that when I have less stuff, it's easier to organize. There were quite a few items that I knew had to go, things like appliances we hadn't touched in the past year, extra mugs that were hardly used, you get the point. This was definitely the easiest part for me because I've been reflecting a lot lately on what's necessary and also what I consider essential in my life. I think it also helped that these items were very practical, so they were either being used or they weren't. Very different from what I would wear and when I'm going through my wardrobe, for example. Since I started my minimalism journey a few years ago, I've learned that decluttering is an ongoing process, and the things we own can and should change based on our changing needs and lifestyles. So this is everything that I'm decluttering, you guys. I am shocked at how much stuff is here because I really had no idea I was gonna have this much to declutter based on just thinking about the things I wanted to get rid of. A lot of this, most of it, is going to be donated because it's all in pretty good condition. Now I'm going to move on to removing the items and kind of sections of the kitchen that I know are going to be moving to a different location and then we will follow up with cleaning those areas before we put the new stuff in. So because we just got a new espresso machine and will be getting rid of our Keurig, I started in this coffee and tea area first. The bottom shelf had a whole bunch of teas that were never used, so those got decluttered and then I decided to transfer the teas we do use to this clear organizer. Having the extra tea canisters was just promoting clutter, which you know I am not here for. Also, this makes seeing how much we have of something so much easier. When it's in those canisters, I literally have to go inside and check what's left when I'm making a grocery list. Next up was putting our sugar, hot cocoa, and matcha powder into canisters. This might seem over the top to some of you, but it honestly does help us see how much we have left of the items, and it also allowed me to use these extra mason jars I had just collecting dust in the cupboard. I honestly think that if you have items that are useful like that, put them to use even if it seems weird especially canistering i know sometimes it can be unnecessary seeing people buy a whole bunch of stuff just to recanister items but in this case it was very useful Once that was done, I moved on to emptying out the upper portion of the old coffee nook and I moved the shelf up a little bit to fit the appliances I wanted to place here. It definitely took a bit of trial and error with the height of some items, but I ended up with the blender being plugged in, which will definitely help to reduce the noise level when it's in use, which is super handy with a baby who naps during the day. We had this plug installed here purposely for a coffee maker, so I'm glad that I was able to continue using that in some way. The new coffee and tea station is now situated above the espresso machine that you see here, so once I kind of cleaned out that cabinet, I placed everything in one row, but I soon realized that the mugs would not fit in addition to this, so for the final solution, make sure you watch until the end of the video. 
For our medicine and vitamins, I decided to switch the organizers they were in so it would all fit nicer in the new spot. I removed expired items and then I grouped like items together. The glassware here just needed a tidy up, so that didn't take long and I feel like without the extra dozen mason jars in here, it'll be much easier to keep neat and tidy on a daily basis. Above the medicine, I decided to put the casserole dishes and small serving bowls that I use most often because it's fairly easy for me to reach. I lined up the alcohol like this so that we can quickly see at a glance what's available either for cooking, gifting, or making the odd beverage. Above the old coffee nook, which is one of the deeper and taller cabinets in the kitchen, I decided to keep the cake pans that don't get used very frequently, along with serving bowls and platters. The platter storage worked perfectly with the organizer I already had, and it made me so happy to find a good use for it. The previous small junk drawer got a good clean out, and I combined all of the non-culinary items in this bigger drawer. I realized we did not need the 30 bread bag clips that I had stored, and I spent a couple of minutes trying to close this knife I had opened, but I gave up because I just could not figure it out. The most difficult task during this project was figuring out where things should go. I was trying to consider the size and weight of items along with how often they were used and where we typically use them in the space. But I'm glad I took my time with this because doing things in the kitchen already seem a lot simpler and convenient because of that effort. I moved on to the baking category next. I pulled everything out, had a good look at what was there, and then I decided to split it amongst two drawers, one of which was the previous junk drawer. The fact that these two clear organizers fit perfectly was so satisfying, I cannot even explain. It's so pleasing to the eye to have space around each item. Next up was baking ingredients. Since this drawer seemed to be quite messy and it continued to stay messy, I knew it would be best to put the packaged items into clear jars and the smaller items got grouped together in a little tray, which will definitely help to keep things tidy on a regular basis. The textile drawer is something that we go into pretty often for the oven mitts, apron, and placemats, so I kept all of that at the front for easy access, and then I just changed the way that the tablecloth and runner were sitting in the drawer. I definitely find that vertically placing items helps us to see and grab things a little bit easier, and it keeps things tidy. At this point, I started feeling really tired. I think it was almost 11 p.m., so I moved on to the easier task of refilling our coffee syrups, and I made myself an iced chai and kept going, moving on to the breakfast drawer next. This was another area that just wasn't functioning as well as it could have, so I used more of the extra jars I had laying around to hold pancake mix, seeds, and other breakfast fixings. Having the drawer set up like this might seem over the top for some people, but I can honestly say that it makes grabbing items so much faster and also enjoyable. There's no questioning what's in the drawer, and there's space for the occasional fresh bread or pastry box we might pick up on the weekends.
Going into this project, I knew I wanted to make this bottom drawer Ella's because she's almost a toddler, which I cannot believe I'm saying already, and I want her to be able to grab her own items when the time comes. So this has all of her eating utensils and plates, and then also her food and snacks. I almost gave up for the night here, but decided to push through and get one more cabinet done. My brother John, bless his heart, went out and got a shelf cut for this large cabinet. I tried out a few organization variations here, but ended up with one shelf at the back for canned goods and both Lazy Susans at the front for grains and pastas. The top shelf now holds all of our snacks, which I did strategically to deter myself from eating so many so often, and so far it's working. The following night I moved on to cooking sauces and spices. I wouldn't say we have a crazy amount of stuff, but I definitely found this category harder to organize because I basically had one drawer and one shelf and they weren't really in the same side of the kitchen. So I switched out the previous basket for two of the same to store dry goods and then I had to play around with the rest of the storage. The standing sauces ended up working best in this clear container from Ikea which you'll probably have noticed by now I had a whole bunch of. They're super cheap and in the past I used them for everything so I'm glad that I was able to continue with that. And I know that using this is going to help keep the cabinet tidy because everything has a spot. Behind it are a few extra unopened items which I purchased before not realizing I already had the product. Through this process I realized that we had three bottles of sesame oil which we don't even use that often so that just goes to show how much easier it is to overbuy when you have a cluttered kitchen. Last but not least, I topped up our spices and switched some unused jars to house spices that were in their original container still. I didn't want to keep the physical recipe papers from HelloFresh and Fresh Prep, so I ended up taking photos of them to store in an album on my phone. I'm honestly not sure why I didn't do this before because it's so handy. Okay, I am finally done. This took way longer than I expected it to, but mostly because I have a child and so I was just constantly being interrupted when I tried to do this during the day but my nights were full of organizing, decluttering, cleaning and I'm super happy with the results so here it is. Even though this project took much longer than I thought it would, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. This process really reminded me that it's okay to have less than full, even empty spaces in our homes, and that just because there's an open space doesn't mean it has to be filled with new stuff, despite what social media tells us. Also, the less we have, the more things will get used and the easier it will be to find those things. I couldn't think of a better place to put this into practice than in the kitchen where I work so frequently. I feel such a sense of peace in my kitchen now, and I hope this video inspires you to set up your own spaces according to your changing needs and lifestyle too. It's really refreshing to be in an environment that supports our well-being and creative endeavors.
brings us to the end of this kitchen makeover video. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did or maybe got some inspiration for your own spaces. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel and it also helps support my family. The next thing that I'm gonna be doing and the last part of my full condo decluttering mini series is my wardrobe, which I'm super stoked about. I saved the best for last. So stick around if you want to see that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.